Hey love, welcome or welcome back if you are returning. My name is Pauline and on this channel, we talk about all things locks, beauty, business, entrepreneurship and all that, okay? So in this video today, we're gonna be talking about the grid, the parts, the stuff that people look for when they have sister locks, micro locks and so forth, so tune in. Okay, so we're talking about the perfect grid that most people are looking for when they're starting their micro locks or sister locks, right? Everyone wants clean and neat parts. And I get it because even I want clean and neat parts. Um, it's me. I take pride in having neat and clean parts, okay? The cleaner, the neater, the better. That is my mojo, okay? But I am also a licensed master cosmetologist and a hair loss expert in the making. Yes, baby. And because I know better, I have to do better, okay? So I'm giving you this information so you would perhaps know and hopefully do better as well. As you all know by watching my channel, hair care and scalp care, you know, it's my number one priority when it comes, especially when it comes to locks. So while you want the perfect grid, your hair and your scalp care will trump that perfect grid every time. Trust me, I want that perfect grid, I want that neat look, but hair care, scalp care is priority. Okay, so let me give you guys a little bit background story. I have a client who I retighten, right? She was a transfer client with concerns about frizz and hair um, growing outside of her locks and so forth. So when she came to me, she expressed the concerns. I fixed them and she's been content with her reties. So recently I did her retie, gave her the clean, um, the clean and neat grid special. Yeah, I know me. I'm going to make sure your hair is looking right before you leave my chair. So boom, boom, boom. Retie done. Hair looking lovely as always, okay? And usually at the end, she's always in the mirror checking my work and making sure all her coins were accounted for, okay? So she's always checking, making sure it looks good, da da, da and all this other stuff, which is fine. You know, I don't mind. And so I know her. she's is a client I would call an OCD client about her hair. Every little thing is like she's questioning every little thing and want her hair to be, to just fall in line. And I'm like, baby girl, your hair ain't going to do everything you want it to do because your hair is going to do its thing. So after she left her appointment, I'm assuming she probably, you know how you pull down your mirror visor and look at your grid or look at your hair or look at anything. So I'm assuming she looked at her hair in the car in the mirror visor because when she called me, I'm like, girl, I know you're not home that fast. <laughs> okay. So she called and she said, oh, um, I, can, can I come back and have you take a look at something? Some parts aren't straight. That's what she said. So when she said that, I'm like, okay. Um, I said, well, I'm currently with a client. You're going to have to um, either come back or I'll see you at the next retire. Um, But I've noticed just women in general, we... Yes, we want to take pride in our hair, but at the same time, we want to move beyond those practices that are causing issues with our hair and scalp in the long run, such as tractional alopecia and other hair loss um, concerns that we typically experience later on in life. Because sometimes the one thing you're doing right now, you're not going to see the effect of it until like five or sometimes 10 years down the line. So if there's anything you can do to prevent those issues, I'm like, let's do that, right? That's 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 my focus right now. And I really feel like that sometimes we as women, we're signing up for alopecia in the long run in the name of this perfect grid. Now, I'm not against a perfect grid. Y'all see my work. I'm not against it. But it should not come in between scalp care and hair care. Okay. Some of the practices that I've seen um, for people to get this quote unquote perfect grid, um, I've seen people use trimmers to cut and create a flawless part. I've people have used um, people use scissors to cut the hair, um, pull the hair. Uh, pull the hair bulb out of the scalp, causing it to bleed, pop, or tear 
uh, the hair, etc. Now, I'm not saying all these methods are wrong, but most aren't necessary and can cause traction alopecia in the long run. If you are doing a grid restoration, you may have to use scissors to cut and separate the hair. I'd rather scissors than pulling the hair, especially if it's a lot of hair that is being um, separated. So that's, you know, typical for um, grid restoration. But if you are cleaning up parts during a general retie, it, to me, it is best to separate the strands from the interlock base than from the scalp. A lot of times people are uprooting the strands from the scalp when they can just literally separate it from the base of the um, interlock. Too much of hair pulling from the scalp in the long run will leave you with a wide part and eventually cause traction alopecia. Most of people ask me all the time about wide parts, wide parts, and wide parts will come from too much tension. When there's too much tension, the hair, the strands are being uprooted pulled from the directly from the scalp or um forcing it by you know trying to move uh strands out the way to create a nice part that um those things over time will cause wider parts and wider parts that means your hair is thinning um and then you will you know eventually have traction alopecia in the long run if you continue with those practices and another thing I've seen is tight reties for just to have a clean looking part. And I've even had clients ask for it to be tight just so one, they, they feel like if it's tighter, it doesn't, it will, it will stay new longer. Um, other people, you know, I've seen locticians do it tighter just so it can look neat for that Instagram picture perfect look. And Y'all know me. I tell y'all all the time, be mindful of tension. Too much tension can, um, can cause um, traction, traction um, alopecia um, and can lead to wide parts. So being mindful um, of that. So when clients are asking me, oh, I want it tight. I'm like, mm -mm, not over here, you know, because you want it. It can be nice it can be done, be retightened nicely to the scalp, but it doesn't need to be tight where clients have to take uh, pills before coming, some type of medication before coming, or they have a headache when they leave, um, or the uh, hair strands is, is popping from the um, breaking away from the scalp. When, when, you see, when you start seeing those signs, it's, that means it's too tight. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be tight for it to be clean and neat. The current client I'm working on, her retie is not tight at all, but it's still nice and clean and neat. You don't have to do it tight for, it to, for you to feel like it's going to be neater if it's tighter. Now, one thing I want to mention about the trimmers, using trimmers to create straight parts. If you're using trimmers, which is to me is a no no in my book. I I will never pull out trimmers to use on somebody's locks just to create um um parts. But if you're using trimmers, I would strongly ask that you reconsider and find other ways to create neater look, neater parts without using um trimmers. Although it's not pulling the hair from the scalp, it can cause thinning. Um, it can cause the lock to, um the lock to thin out. And you have to think long term, if you're constantly using trimmers to create um, straight parts, you're actually cutting, you're, you're cutting strands of hair, right? But that strand of hair is still attached to the lock. It's not attached to the scalp anymore, but it's still attached to the lock. So think about if a client wished to comb out their hair later on, they would lose a lot of hair, a lot more hair than they would normally do through general um, shedding. So that's something to consider. If you're getting your locks and you're thinking later on you want to, you know, comb them out, when you go to comb them out, you will lose a lot of um, hair because the hair is being, um, being cut at the root constantly. Okay, so now let's talk about how to keep a clean grid without damaging your hair follicles, okay? Uh, be consistent with your retie maintenance. If you're consistent, it is going to help the hair 
it's going to train the hair to stay in its place. It's you, you don't have to worry about the hair marrying together or so forth. So be consistent. Um, you also want to separate your locks after shampooing to prevent the roots um, from marrying together. If you're going um, a long time without a retie, separate often and keep the new growth soft and moisturized to prevent matting at the root. Okay. And if you're, um, if you're a loctician, I would definitely say clean up and separate the hair gently. Like you, as you see, as I'm going through, I'm not anal about every strand, um, having to be out of, you know, in a certain place. I clean it up. I make it nice enough, but I'm not anal about every strand. And going back to the story of the client calling, um, because some parts um, weren't straight. So pretty much it was just, she saw a couple of strands that were, she that she felt like were out of place and was going into another lock when it should be um, in, in a lock. And she felt like it's preventing her part from being as straight as she would like. Now for me, I tell people all the time, if you're looking, if hair care and scalp care isn't your goal, then I'm not the loctician for you. I am not going to be pulling hair out of the, out of your uh, scalp, pulling up your hair follicles and all that other stuff just to get a straight part. If I see some strands that if I try to separate is going to do more harm than good, I am going to leave it alone. And so I tell folks, if you want every strand um, in place, even if it's going to cause damage to your scalp, then find you somebody who's not going to care about your hair because it's not going to be me. I am not going to jeopardize your scalp for, you know, a few strands, a couple of strands that you feel like that's out of place. I clean, like, look at this. This is clean. But if you go look deep, you you probably find like one strand that might be, you know, that could should be in another lock and I'm not going to pluck and pull if I see it's too tight it's going to cause bleeding if I'm trying to separate it but I see it's um it's 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 tough it it's not separating easily I'm going to leave it alone I'm not going to put my client in pain I'm not going to um make you bleed I'm not going to do all that just to get a straight part so my suggestion to that client was then you know I'm you might have to find another loctician if you're going to be anal about every little thing um, and be um, adamant about these strands being in place. I am not the loctician that is going to sacrifice your scalp for a straight part. So she has some, you know, thinking and considering um, to do. But as y'all can see, the work is consistent and I want you guys to be happy with your hair and not get so caught up with parts having to be like picture perfect. I, I, I really don't know what it is, but do not be so obsessed with straight parts. You want straight parts. Like all of this stuff is straight, but you can get it straight without causing pain to your scalp, without causing you to have alopecia later on down the line, without causing your scalp to bleed. You know, we're going to do what's best for your scalp. So if you feel like you're someone who is anal about clean parts, there's nothing wrong with that. Just do not sacrifice your hair, um, your scalp care for that, you know. And even looking at this client, if you look closely, you might find one strand that could be in a better position. But anywho, but at the end of the day, I just tell um, people it's okay to have nice, clean stuff, but do not sacrifice healthcare. So please, let's get away from thinking that tighter um, reties is better, pulling out clippers and scissors, snapping, you know, things every, you know, clipping things away every two seconds. Neither, um, um, tighter isn't better. Healthier hair is, healthy scalp is. So if y'all have any questions, drop it in the comments uh, below. Lastly, if you're a loctician or you're considering becoming a loctician and you're looking into courses, mentorship, or anything like that, let's connect. I can definitely um, help you out. So let's connect and let's see how I can support you.